we've uncovered something and they're letting us know as a group of creatures we're almost on the right track if you're new to the channel i love reacting and listening to genshin impact music and today we're going to be listening to the aranara song sumeru la 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 all versions because why not let's go Listen, oom pop pop, oom pop pop. This is a waltz. This is a playful children's waltz. Playful, youthful, young, innocent, impressionable. A simple la 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 that has children's music written all over it, and that's exactly what this is. Nice swelling there with the strings to give emphasis and back up that that simple, simple, simple uh, melody over top. You know, there's a little bit of intrigue and mystery here, too. Obviously, these aren't actually children. It looks like they're like mush or like flower creatures with bow ties. Cute ending. The long bowing here too is really interesting because like I said, it does support the children's voices, but it also leads into a little bit of, uh, I hesitate to say any sort of tension, but it does lead into this sort of like, what are these things? This is interesting, but they're singing really cutely, so I'm going to trust them. Uh, this is version one instrumental next. That right there. Bum, 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 bum. Interesting melody. Bum, 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 by the marimba. Again, it has this little like, I know something you don't. That's the sort of energy I'm getting from that little mel melodic phrase. First of all, that guitar is absolutely gorgeous in the back. There's a bit of laughter in that. It's almost like the, this is sort of this quirky, this quirky laughing song. I think uh, that guitar and then the violin really bring out, first of all, I love that trading off. We see this so commonly in Genshin Impact. There's a romanticism in that melody, I think, because it has a fluidity to it, both in the violin, but also the way that the guitar is being strummed. That brings out a more serious side of it, a more soulful side of it, a more genuine side of it. That brings out that more uh, like beautiful, like keepers of the forest, guardians of the an, a, a area, the guardians of energy, things like that. And it really comes across there. Mm -hmm. 
also mystery mystery there's a lot of mystery here with that muted xylophone or whatever there's there's a bit of mutedness which i think leads into like who are these what are these things you know right there That space there is really curious because the space, maybe it's like the first time discovering, oh, it just jumped. Oh, what? You know, there's, there's that gap there that leaves a question. Version two. Interesting phrasing here because we have that long phrasing, but less uh, pits, less less short, playful. We have long, short, long, short. Uh, mm, okay. That drum really gives this earthy sound quality too, which I think roots them in like this forest idea. You also hear too this bassoon, that gives more of that playful nature to it. Boom. And they're more of that jokey, but it boom 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 he 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 uh, version two uh, instrumental. A change in key. Yeah, this version has a bit more seriousness to it again, but we have that trade-off. I think it's a, an English horn, or yeah, the English horn there. All these instruments that we've heard in Mondstadt and in Liwe, especially Mondstadt, are now, have come back in Sumeru. It's a very interesting experience to hear this full Western orchestration with this sort of drumming. It gives it a, a, a very um, serious perspective and very lush and beautiful. I think actually this instrumental is maybe describing the area where the Aranada live rather than describing the Aranada themselves. And 
and of course, I've seen a picture, so I understand the Adonai are very little, but this this oboe or English horn, whichever one it is, mixed with these castanets, too. I think the castanets are their like personality, like a little bit spicy. Because of the nature of the way that the oboe is with that with that double reed, there's almost like a, 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 a tiny quality to them. Obviously, I've seen the picture. I know they're tiny, but I think that that oboe lends itself to that describer because because it's like it's a little bit tight and so like i just think like like miniature and like full of energy So now we have this echo and we have this far away feeling, almost like we're in a cave or almost like it's nighttime or almost like we've uncovered something and they're letting us know as a group of creatures, we're almost on the right track. And so everything is spaced out and everything is a little bit ethereal and a little bit more like spacey. And with, with the tremolo there in the strings too, I think that, that is, that's alluding to danger, that's alluding to mischief or, or discovery, but like not a good discovery. What's cool about this too is that it's essentially an a cappella song plus the lower drum or whatever instrument that is that's just plucking out the the root I think the root chord notes uh, you know like the the central point for the chorus and then the chorus the chorus echo that la 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 echo is creating the effect of being multiple different instruments even though it's just the singers. Yeah, we're getting a real science fiction element to this, a little discovery unraveling. And now it's gentler, now it's a little bit more uh, lovely and a little bit more gentle. Version 3, instrumental next. And I think that this this echo, again, is, is really useful in getting us to feel like we're in a cavern, feel like we're in a cave, feel like it's nighttime, feel like something is amiss, feel like something's not right, especially in the upper octave, it's in the piano. That upper octave, it does not give us a warm tone, it gives us a bright, 
clarion crystal tone that can mean not necessarily good things because of where it sits it pierces us a little bit more whereas if it was in the middle of the keyboard it would be a bit of a warmer sound whereas the low would be a little bit more of a ominous or broody sound potentially depending on note combinations chord combinations and, and key signature and stuff so that's interesting choices I'm struck by the fact that the melody has not changed one bit in these variations. Yes, we've changed key. Yes, we've had a little bit of the back instrumentals shift a bit, but overall we've stayed in the same melody. So I wouldn't even call it a variation on a theme because the theme has not changed. And really it's only the accompaniment that's changed for different scenarios and different situations. I don't know what versions are where and why they're that way, but I find it interesting that things are largely staying the same despite sort of this it, it's, it hasn't developed, it, it has shifted a bit. It's interesting. version 4 vocal. We certainly haven't lost the magic or the mystery. And I looked up the Adonada etymology, and Adonada is possibly derived from the Sanskrit word ara, ara, aranya, meaning forest or wilderness, and nada, meaning man or person. It may also be related to ara, aranyaka, meaning produced, born, relating to a forest, or belonging to the wilderness. It's almost like guardians of the forest in a lot of ways.
Even something like that. La la. Even holding out a note four to eight beats longer, let's say, that's a resolution. It ends. Then we dip off and we have that silence. These spaces are really interesting and I wonder what they signify because the space feels like it's emptiness. The space feels like it's, there's certainly a mythological aspect to this. And then the space, hmm. The more I listen to this, the more that there's a sad quality attached to it too. Have you noticed there's also like, yes, we're trading off instrumentation here, but there is quite a bit less instrumentation. It almost sounds distant. It almost sounds like far away as if things are pulled back and reflective. Yeah, a, a bit of a longing quality, almost like it's a little sad. That's pretty introspective and uh, really curious. It goes to show that there is so much more Sumero music and Sumero, Sumero. There's a lot more of this music that is, is it's just, this is a new, a new direction for Genshin Impact. And it's certainly one that is very beautiful and interesting and diverse. As always, if you like Genshin Impact, this channel has a lot of Genshin Impact for you. Uh, feel free to check out this video. And as always, if you like this sort of stuff, feel free to like, subscribe. There's links in the about section if you want to support the channel. And I'll talk to you later.